Too many Friday the 13 THS have been straight scare fests for Jason Voorhees taking. This year there's a new killer character in town for the superstitious date for Blumhouse's horror comedy Freaky. To get killed. Cute, the creepy dude in the mask. The movie coming from Happy Death Day director Christopher Landon brings a new twist to the slasher movie when Catherine Newton's high schooler Millie accidentally swaps bodies with the Blissfield Butcher, played by Vince Vaughn. Don't freak out. Can we talk about that freaky ending? We're going to get into all the bloody details that happened at the end of Freaky here, so if you have yet to see the new Blumhouse movie, here's your spoiler warning. I highly recommend you check it out, it's a ton of fun. Just check out what critics are saying. We're going to talk about the body swap magic used in Freaky and speculate how the film could creak open the door for a slasher sequel. Let's jump in. What happened at the end of Freaky? Freaky ends when the Blissfield Butcher and Millie finally collide just before the 24-hour window for the body swap is about to end, fading Millie to be in the body of a wanted murderer all her life, while the serial killer hopes to take advantage of hiding in the shadows as a teenage girl. I want my body back. Come and get it. Millie in the body of Vince Vaughn and her friend Josh and Celeste retrieve the ancient knife from her sister's police precinct and use it on the butcher in the body of Catherine Newton as it happened before. At first, they think they are too late due to a watch being set a couple minutes early, but yay for punctuality. Just following the body switch back to the right bodies, the police arrive and shoot the Blissfield Butcher dead or so we think. We then meet Millie back in her home with her mom and sister, who are having a sweet evening together following a wacky 24 hours. Millie and her mom have a heart to heart about her going away to college, instead of her feeling the need to stay with her. After this the Blissfield Butcher returns to finish off Millie for a final standoff. She is able to defend herself with the help of her sister and mom, and she drives the leg of a chair into his chest. <laughs> making him really dead this time. How the body swap magic works. Freaky is set in motion during a murderous rampage for the Blissfield Butcher, who kills off a number of teenagers in the town where Catherine Newton's Millie lives. While Millie is waiting to be picked up from school after a game as the school's beaver mascot, she has a confrontation with the butcher, who pins her down and uses a mysterious ancient knife to stab her. <laughs> this is the device that enacts the body swap magic for Freaky. Pair some nondescript Aztec magic with it all happening on Friday the 13th and Voila a body swap. It's pretty classic for body swap movies to use some sort of unexplained old magic to set in motion the circumstance. Remember in Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis? Their swap happened thanks to fortune cookie magic at a Chinese restaurant set off by the owner of the restaurant. The Blissfield Butcher stole the knife from a glass case in the mansion in the beginning of the film. I imagine it is an artifact out of some form of archaeological excavation that the butcher accidentally came across. The movie leaves its origins to the imagination, such as if it only works on Friday the 13th or if that was a coincidence, so there's more freakiness the movie doesn't even go during its runtime. It's perfect. You couldn't last one day in my high school. Okay. That's all about to change. The open wounds Freaky left us with. What's interesting about the ending of Freaky is the magic object that led to Millie and the butcher to switch bodies is still around once the credits roll. The high schoolers do not think to destroy it, leaving the potential for more body swap fun. Not only that, there's a strange air of introduction and open-endedness about the end of Freaky that makes one believe that it could theoretically continue. Millie and her friends Celeste and Josh were a blast to watch hang out together, we'd easily spend more time with them, not to mention all the murders Millie technically committed. Not only is that psycho wearing my body, he's killing it. How will Millie explain to everyone that it was not her? Even if she has an explanation, it doesn't mean everyone will accept it. And with kills comes the possibility for revenge. Does the Blissfield Butcher have any connections who could be coming looking for him? What about the owner of the magical knife? There's more story here, and the film's producer Jason Blum has already said he's ready to make a sequel to Inverse. There's a lot of body swap possibilities, but what about Vince Vaughn? Born. Oh my god, did you just pee yourself? Yes! Could Vince Vaughn return for a sequel? 
As it stands according to the end, the chances of Vince Vaughn returning if a sequel does come for Freaky feels unlikely. The Blissfield Butcher died twice, the last time with a stake through him, it would be redundant for a third helping. That is unless Vaughn's Butcher had a twin brother of some sort? I would not rule it out though, Christopher Landon did something wacky with Happy Death Day to you by having Tree be part of a time loop and parallel universe. Yes. The day reset when you died, right? Yeah. Ah! I might be able to help with that. I died 11 times. Allowing for more of the magic from the original to continue. There could be more to the magic of the knife we've yet to see. And, a freaky sequel just wouldn't be the same without him. Vince Vaughn is not one to make sequels though. Wearing. I'm actually really liking this for you.